doing things here and there, but um, oh, is that a fax? Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Oh my god, it's a Roomba. It was hiding under this bed the whole time. I think it should have disclosed its whereabouts. That was a little creepy. I'm glad bed didn't break. I'm Diana Torche, and I'm here with director Desiree Akhavan. Her new film, The Miseducation of Cameron Post, snatched the grand jury prize at Sundance and has been widely released to critical acclaim. I sat down to chat with Desiree about the film's exploration of gay conversion therapy, what it was like adapting the novel to film, as well as Bojack Horseman. The Miseducation of Cameron Post is about a teenage girl in 1993 who is lesbian, who's caught being lesbian, and because her parents are unfortunately dead and she lives with her evangelical aunts, she is subsequently sent to a conversion therapy camp yeah. where she has all kinds of coming of age experiences. All kinds. I wasn't interested in making a film about gay conversion therapy. I wanted to make a teen film in the vein of John Hughes and the movies mm -hmm. I loved growing up that spoke to me and spoke about that moment as a teenager that you realize that the adults in your life don't know what the fuck they're doing. And I'm really happy to shed light on gay conversion therapy. I have strong feelings against it. But at the same time, I think it's a film that could touch you even if you're not queer. Back to work. You were asked to write and direct the screenplay, or no? no? I asked myself. I loved the book Why? when I first read it. It was just really honest about the experience of being a teenager. A lot of films really talk down to that age, mm. and books too. And when I read the book, I thought like, oh, this is really honest, and this is the only story I've ever read that felt so honest about being a teen and then also mm -hmm. growing up gay. So I shared it with my girlfriend at the time, and she or read it, loved it, and was like, you got to make this into a movie. That's awesome. I went to rehab as a, in my 20s mm -hmm. for an eating disorder, mm -hmm. and I always wanted to make a film about that experience. And Does it feel what, like you have? Yeah. Yeah. To me, this film was a film about rehab, that that center was a weird uh, mix of rehab, boarding school, and jail. We have an art therapy scene that is entirely influenced by my hatred of art therapy. Let's see, um, this woman riding a horse, mm -hmm. she's you, galloping away from a past of gender confusion and, and into a bright future of opposite sex lovemaking. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> hold on, this cat, and this cat is the devil. Think of it as your past, the temptations and the dangers and, hey, how are you? Good work, Adam. Thank you. This rehab center actually is like, breathing a new voice in these kids' heads, mm. being like, you're sick. It's not, that's not your sexuality. It's actually a sickness. Every time you desire someone, they're like, wait, wait, wait. This is your gender confirmation was wrong. You know, mm -hmm. you don't understand what it is to be You played a sports woman. too much. Yeah, you played too much that's sports. You or your parents pussy. weren't, you know, <laughs> you didn't have the right female influences in your life growing up. How's the iceberg coming? Good. Good, just slow. Oh, cool. I have gender confusion because of sports too. You know, LGBT issues have been perceived and culturally in a way that they seem like very separate and like I very mean, individualistic, not. but they're not. We all fuck. But I just think that there's a condescension that comes into, well, that's the experience of the queers. And it's like, no, that's a human experience. Exactly. See, you and I are on the same page about this. Because my, ooh, this is, this bowl's becoming useful. Okay. These, this is people, right? Yeah. Okay, so this person's gay, and this person is bisexual, and this person is a lesbian, mm -hmm. and this person is transgender. Mm -hmm. And then you're just like, okay, those people are all different because most of these people are not gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender, so they're in their own community. I also bet these fuckers feel yes, like honey. crazy about their sexuality, that there's something Me about too. their kink or their desire or the way that they love that makes them feel crazy and they're just not gonna communicate. And the thing about these people is like a lot of their time is spent self-identifying through who they fuck. Because the because majority- Because it's the most defining factor of their gay life. The only Just thing cool that makes sense cool about me is my desire to have sex with other women as a woman. What do you do in your free time? 
So when I'm actually free, I'm comatose and in bed. So I would say binge watching things I've already seen, like Bojack Horseman. Is it about a horse? Technically, yeah. It's a very uh, annoyed, drunk horse. Yeah. Am I right? Basically, it's it's about this horse who was a well. It li it's the it's, horse it's, was a what well, detective? It <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the show you're pitching. Um, <laughs> It's about but a detective whore. No, mm -hmm. I want to see the detective whore. Oh, that's me, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a detective whore from the NYPD, and you're under arrest. <laughs> that's me. Yes. 